Shalawam. Shalawam. Who is on foremost on the give all praises to Yahweh oh, for Hashem Yahweh Shai. We give double honors to the apostles of great mercy and do rule well. Salutation to the men of the hope and since they left. But I'm mad. I'm going to send Marcus out here in Trinidad. You know, out here to do the Lord's will. You know, calling upon the, 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 the children of Israel, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans to come back to the Lord. The right to return. All right? And that is the reason the Lord sent us out here. The Lord sent us out here as shepherds to gather the flock. All right? Um, let me read this real quick. This is the book of um, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 50 and 17. It says, Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria had devoured him. Alas, this Nebuchadnezzar, had, uh, uh, king of Babylon, had broken his bones. All right? And in the ancient times, you know, the, you know those, two, those two nations were the ones that, that caused Israel to, to, to leave the land. All right? Now, we, oh, we out here, we scattered through all nations. Why? Because we sinned against Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right? But the Lord about to bring judgment on these nations because now is the time of mercy. Now is the time of redemption where the Lord, Yahaba Hashem Shai, is about to reveal himself and to, you know, buy back the, you know, the, the house of Israel. Um, All right? Um, this is um, Zachariah chapter... Um, one and, I'll start at 14. Now, in fact, I'll start at verse 13. Right? Zechariah 1 13. It says, And Yahweh answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So that the angel that communed with me said unto me, cried out, saying, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction. Yeah. The Lord was a little displeased because the scripture says, He that touched you, touched me. You understand? He that touched you, touched me. Oh, and he also said in all the affliction, he was afflicted. Alright? So, the Lord afflicted us. And the scripture says, He does not afflict willingly. So, the Lord afflicted us because we sinned, but the nations, they went in. They went and did and you know, as people say, they did the most. You understand? They went and made sure that they, you know, they, we were already on the ground lying down, but they, they took their heels and grinded it in our backs to make sure that they, we were, we were pressed. So the Lord said, you know, he, 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 he saw this please now. And that is why he coming to bring judgment against them and great judgment. Go ahead. Come, it says verse 16. Therefore thus said Yahweh, by Hashem Yashai, and return to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it. Yeah, he said, return to Jerusalem with mercies. The mere fact that we've been able, if you go through the, the first four books of the of, of Judges, right? The four, first four chapters of Judges, you will see Israel repeatedly going in captivity. And what would happen every time the Lord sent that judge? The reason the Lord will send a judge to deliver them is because they remember themselves Hosea 5 and 15 and they called on the name Yahaba Hashem Yahushai and he delivered them and he sent a deliverer but pursuant to Jeremiah chapter 40 um, I think it's 46 he says he will take the name I think it's 46 or 44 somewhere around there he said he will take his name out the mouths of the people of Judah so he took away his name so that we couldn't call upon him for salvation. And that is why we were in captivity for so long. But now he returned his name unto us. He returned his son's name unto us. The, the key to salvation, Yahweh Hashem Shai. And that is why you see the prophecies speeding up. Because we hear calling, beckoning, calling upon the name, crying unto Yahweh Hashem Shai, our God, our power, our Lord, our Savior, our husband. For salvation that's right and that is why he making uh, 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 you know he hasten to bring the end of this world 
because the end of this world means the salvation of Jacob and the beginning of it that follow it. That's right. This is Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. Did I finish that? Alright, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, alright, come. <coughs> it says, um, right? And a line shall be stretched forth of, upon Jerusalem. Cry yet saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, My city's just prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and Yahweh shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Yeah, hey, back it up with Isaiah 40. You say, well, Yet choose them. You know why? Because the Lord not going to forsake us for another. Alright? He not going to forsake us for another. It's Isaiah 14, verse 1. For Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Israel. Yeah. So the Lord will yet choose them. And hey, I just want to read this here to back you up to show you that how much the Lord want to choose us that he don't even want another all right this is the book of Hosea Hosea chapter 3 and verse 1 all right Hosea chapter 3 and verse 1 it says then said Yahba Shemel shown to me go yet love a woman beloved of her friend yet an adulteress according to the love of Yahweh towards the children of Israel. He says, who look to other gods and love flagoons of wine. He says, so I bought her um, to me for 15 pieces of silver, which shows a man always buys a woman, and for a home of barley, and for a home, and for a half home of barley. And I said unto her, this is the main part here, and I said unto her, thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not pray the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man, so will I also be for thee. So the Lord said, hey, you know, you don't go to another man. Don't, you know, you just be there and just wait. And during that time, I also will wait until the time come that I will and take you back. And that is the process we're in right now. Because the, the purchase already made when you have a shy shed his blood. But when the scripture says, um, the Lord shall be in the midst of us, he not in the midst of us right now. That marriage is gonna come when he delivers us. And when he's gonna be one with us again, and he's gonna be in the midst of Jerusalem. Alright? So right now we we just like in Hosea tree. So the Lord said, Hey, I don't even want another. I just want you. And I want you so bad that I'm willing to wait that process until it's time for me to take you back. All right? And, um, you know, whoever played Mortal Kombat 11, um, this guy, um, the guy that, that, you know, the Aztec guy, you know, he, he had a wife. And what happened, you know, they've they merged timelines. So it's like, a, um, I think it's a past timeline. With the future timeline so in the future timeline the woman that he was with his wife she died and he basically stayed without a wife and when the, the only two timelines merge you know she asked him she said how, how come you know you never get our next wife he said nobody never tried he said yeah many tried and failed and he said because they were not you so he only wanted that one so he stayed without her he never thought that he would have gotten her back but he just didn't want no one else and it's the same thing with Yahba Hashem Shai. the Lord don't want no other that's why he said he will yet choose Israel the Lord could have cast us off and easily taken up another nation even if he didn't want this filth alright this this spittle alright this droplet in a bottle these other nations out here even if he didn't want them he could have easily created a new nation and took them but the Lord didn't want that. He wants Israel. He said he will yet choose Israel. Right. And that is why in these last days, the Lord, Yahabah, Hashem, Yahushai, returning unto us. Okay, you have a parallel. Hmm? You have a parallel. Same, same thing went on with some, with some jigs. You understand where this, this woman, well, there was, um, basically she had a child. 
lost a child in an accident, but the same thing like a, a, a multiverse like. Mm. Right now, so she's going through a forest, and every time she cross through the, the, the trees, like a, a tree, like the back, um, hollow out, whatever the case is, uh, tree damage. But when they pass, then they end up in a different dimension, right? And basically, same kind of family scenario, but she ended up in her next timeline because the one that she went back in, she friend and husband died. But she ended up in one way, she had to end up killing the next person just like she. But she ended up with the man and, and she's son, she didn't want to know around. The same thing with the fella. You understand? He went to basically, you know, go back into a timeline where he could get back his wife also. Okay. Yeah, this is Luke 19 and verse. Um, Verse 10, it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Alright? So, when the Lord come to seek and to save that which was lost, you want to know what was lost. He said what? It's Matthew chapter 15 and verse, that verse 21. Right? Matthew 15 and 21, it says, Then Yahushai went hence, and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the coast, or come out of the same coast, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So she had faith. And that was an Israelite woman that was dwelling amongst the other nations. But she believed, she said, Thou son of Chief, she showed, she's a Lord. She's saying, Just mighty one just because she saw him doing um you know miracles she said hey the son of david yahoo shine all right you want promise to come have mercy on me and that is what we're doing out here you understand that is what we're doing out here that is why you know paul said he deal with them gent like a like a like a nurse with the young because we don't know who is an elect you understand that is why he said take he lets you pray one of these little ones all right he says Verse 23 says, But he answered for not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. It says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. And I see the Lord said unto the lordship of the house of Israel. So that purchase that was made was made only to the house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh Shai, he shed his blood. Alright? He shed his blood to cleanse, to cleanse the sins of the elect. Alright? To cleanse the blood of the elect of Israel so that his father, Yahabash, should you know, have mercy on us to take us back. Alright? Um, I'm going to read some here real quick. This is Ezekiel There's something we need in time while I look at it. Oh. Ah, fine. This is Ezekiel chapter 16. chapter 6 plus verse 4 it says and as for thy nativity in the day thou was born thy neighbor was not cut neither was thou washed with water to swaddle thee it says thou was not salted at all nor swaddled um, salted at all nor swaddled at all none I pity thee then the scripture said none of your lovers will seek you all right. right they shall forsake you it says to do any of these to thee unto thee to have compassion unto thee, but thou was cast out in the open field. Lord said, None shall know that no man shall buy you. And, and that is what's going on now. None of the nations they care about us. They have no, they have no pity upon us. Right? It says, And thou was cast out into the open field to the um to the the loading of thy person and um in 
I think it's in Corinthians it says what we are the offspring of all people, the filter the earth. Alright? Alright, um in the day that thou was born, and when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, When thou was in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. And that is what the Lord doing now. We was in our blood. We was defiled. Alright, the scripture in Lamentation, it says Jerusalem is as a menstrual cloth among them. Filthy. Alright? And the Lord came unto us in these last days and said, Live. And that is why we out here, we wash to the Lord Yahweh Hashem El Shai. We wash our blood. But the scripture says in Revelation, they have um, washed their, their, their garments in the blood of the Lamb. Alright? It says, I have caused thee to multiply as the blood of the field, and thou was in peace and wax great, and said, and thou art come to excellent ornaments, thy breasts um, are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, and whereas thou was naked and bare, all right, it says, no, when I passed by thee, I looked on thee, and behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness, yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, said the Lord Yahweh Shabbat Shai, and thou becamest mine. And we are the Lord. Alright? Said in the place where it was thrown to thee, that thou art not my people, there shall be thrown to thee, that thou art the children of the whole side. He says that I washed thee with water. Yea, uh, the scriptures say, wash up the water, uh, the spirit by the word. You understand? He says, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. This is what the Lord did. And anointed thee with oil. I clothed thee also with broiled wool and shod thee with badger skin. I girded thee about with fine linen. I covered thee with silk. I turned up uh, Revelation, I think it's um, 19 and 8. It said the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. All right, it says, I deck thee with ornaments and put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain upon thy neck. It says, I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thy ears and a beautiful crown upon thy head. It says, Thou was decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broided wool. And thou did eat fine flour and honey and oil, which is this wool. And thou was exceeding beautiful, and did prosper in a, uh, into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through thy comeliness, which I had put upon thee, said the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shai. Right? And that is when the Lord took us and set us up in the time of from David unto Solomon. But not the Lord, the Lord doing that same exact thing right now. And in the kingdom, we're going to be that same way in the sight of the nations. That is why Balaam said, let my last end be like his. Let me die the death of the righteous. I shall behold him, but not now. I shall see him, but not near. All right? And Balaam saw the end of the righteous man, and he wanted to be like the righteous. But it's only going to be for Israel. That is why the scripture says, such as Israel's portion, not the whole world. Well, this is uh, Matthew 18 verse 12. How think he, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains, and seek that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiced more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones shall perish. Yeah. I stand at once, the Lord chose you to be part of the elect. The Lord but I had a spirit hovering above you always for salvation. That is why the scripture say, um, the helmet of salvation. Yeah. You understand? When you head your spirit, so the Lord have your spirit protected that, and, and, and even the shield of faith. But that is why this, matter of fact, you know, let me read that. Let me read that. Because at the end of the day, the neck is the neck, the neck are the ones, you know, who the most are, they're going to put their trust in Yahweh Hashem El Shai, right? Or when the, um, the MOTD, you know, being um, pushed 
which right now we, we have been saying it for years that they will um, publicize it you understand so i was watching a video from um gms dedication where um the first person from elon um the the, the link in the head you understand um he was talking about hey, well as the first person to take it and it make life much easier you see guys you think they will make these miracles look so you know enticing can sell it on the convenience exactly you know they will tell you the benefits of taking it you notice how everything from since covid basically covid was the era of convenience Damn. from since 2020 is the era of convenience because a lot of online stores open everything became convenient to you. you don't have to leave your house to go shopping you know you can stay home you have food delivered to you clothes you have um auto parts delivered to you all right you have uber you could even here in Trinidad, you have TTRS. Car, a car could come to you home. You don't, you don't have to leave your, your house to go and wait for a taxi. They're coming to you. Convenience. Everything's sold under convenience. So now, when they, they get you so accustomed to convenience, which is easy living, it's going to be hard to break out of the habit. So they're going to do now, and they say, hey, you want to continue with this convenience? You ever notice, like, um, you know, and YouTube, YouTube doing that right now. Every time they come up with a new feature, they would allow you the new feature for a while, and then stop it. So then, you know, for you to to, to get those features, you have to you have to go and, and pay for it. So they would they would give you a trial, a trial version, a trial, a trial a period where you could try certain features, and you say, hey, I like this new feature, but to get you to pay. So now when they get you so accustomed to this new feature which is convenience hey you want to continue in this then all right you have to take that c hip all right you got to take that c hip which is the motv to continue with convenience and, and that is the same thing that close shot said in order to take part in the uh, near future everybody must take uh cbdc underneath their uh the skin you understand so which you know when you go back into revelation 13 16 because it all Right, because I remember having a, a discussion with some um, classmates, and they say, "Hey, um, we ain't gonna have the money to pay that." Say, "Hey, let's show how much you, you people are ignorant." That is scripted. I say, "What well, my, my people appreciate the lack of knowledge." You understand? Because because it all, you ain't gonna have to pay for this. Make, he'll make it run towards it, and you, you ain't gonna really, just like how the, the vaccines was free. You have to pay for the vaccines. No, you didn't have to pay for the vaccines. You understand? But you got it. Isn't that so? And we see how they basically, I, 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 I don't think they would have terraforming but transforming the place right now where they put in up cameras. All this is technology that he saw using that he had become as God. He sees you, he knows where you are, especially with those CBDCs that are going to be on and your skin. You understand? He will know where he is, however, with these um, um, super computers that, that, that they have that they're storing right now in um, Illinois. They, they run people all out of their homes to make big factories for basically the brain for an um, AI. You understand? They're just transforming everything. And they did that in um in Beast Wars. If anybody knows Transformers, Beast Wars, when Megatron hook up himself to all other Transformers. So what he's seeing through their eye, what them seeing, he's seeing. You understand? Yeah, um, transcend everything again. Same thing. Watch that get I get catch my ass if needs to watch that. Um, this is um is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and you know what you mean by being strong in the Lord it means to have trust that is when you're strong in somebody in somebody you, you know you you have full trust in this person that you know hey what this person say you're gonna do you understand you're gonna do it you're gonna fulfill um Wherever he said, he said he's gonna deliver you, gonna save you. My servant shall eat, my servant shall drink, my servant shall rejoice. Hey, you have faith in that. Hebrews 6 and 10. The Lord is not unfaithful to forget your labor of love towards his name. That's right. So, you know, once you do this work, and that is, that is the thing. A lot of people, you know, they, they, they stop going out on the highways, they stop doing videos, but yet they say, oh, they believe. 
But the Lord said, He said, By your works which you believe. And also He said, um, You have to labor to enter into that rest. Okay. So if you stop doing the work, what is your work? And that is the Spirit, because as we, as we tape in here, that was that, is that topic actually came into my head to do. You understand? I, I hope I get you to do it because certain situations but you know basically leaving a camp or being kicked out of a camp right doesn't mean you know um to just uh, stop doing the works or, or to even be disrespectful because a lot of persons are also always say let me say you leave IUIC or, or you get kicked out of IUIC go there and do the works you understand and no matter just can so do just keep on pushing but I just to show some men they in it for what you know it's, the scripture says some men um they preach for, for for strife some people they preach for the vain glory you see the thing is with iuic iuic they their whole structure revolves around family and marriage yep. and not pushing the work of the lord so a lot of people come in as evil christianites they you know the so-called black movement is is, is is like a thing now so a lot of and that is it the scripture says knowledge shall be increased that's right so ever so often he so have to change of the doctrine so first there was a pale white man called jesus but then people start to realize nah his name couldn't be jesus yeah. so then they say nah it's not jesus it's yeshua and then they say now nah, then he he couldn't be white, so then they start to say, well, nah, he not white, he tan. Can. So they keep changing it up. So then people realize that, hey, this man was a dark-skinned man. So then they leave all from Jesus, with, his, with Jesus in their mind, in their heart, and join IUIC, because IUIC said, hey, Christ. So they just, they just move into what they know. That. You understand? They just move into what they know, just a different shade of gray. That is it. Um, and when any, as the scripture said in Matthew um, 13, I think it's 21, when tribulation, because of the word arise, by and by they were offended. That they, they, just, they just dissipate. They just, it's like they just, um, what is called, dissolve into, in, back into the world. Right? Because they had no foundation to begin with. They had no root within themselves. Um, the root begins with the fear of Yahabah Shemyosha. Here for you. This is um second is just chapter two and verse twenty-six, as you're talking before. It says, And for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. You understand? Because um, you know. Hey, because we're talking also about putting the trust in the Lord, right? This is um, Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, thinking that we said that I trust in the Lord. Yeah. I think it's close to the end. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah I think it's true, you know. If it's not Ecclesiasticus, it's not nah, it's not Ecclesiasticus. Do that fear the Lord will not be our first now. Have any trust to put there? Right, come. Um, Ecclesiastes 2 and 10. I will start at verse 8, at 6. It says, Believe in him, and he will help thee. All that I will write. Okay, well, start at 1. Start at 1. Yeah. Alright, come. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure. I make not haste in the time of trouble. Can. Let me just read chapter 1 and verse 23, right? It says, make not haste in the time of trouble. Can. It says, a patient man will bear for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. Can, so, can. you understand? You scripture say you have seen the energy righteous man. Now, that is the time that we are about to enter into. The scripture of Revelation chapter 2 and 10, it says, the time that the Lord going to try the world. And, right. the, and the joy, and in Psalm says, joy cometh in the morning, 
and that morning the scriptures say you know, the day star arise at Yahweh shall come in the morning and we cannot be with Yahweh shall and we shall ever be with him everlasting joy is that and five and raise them everlasting joy shall be upon their heads huh? and that is what we're looking for the joy that cometh in the morning because right now we, I mean right now you could see we in the night right look at um, Russia send um, one of the, 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 the warships or gunships in the Red Sea you know because right now we know that the UK and the United States they have like, basically a fleet of naval ships in the Red Sea to basically combat the Houthis and now we know that basically um, the Houthis backed by Iran and Iran and Russia and China basically linked because the Houthis did say even though they basically made a mistake and misfired on, on Chinese and Russian vessels before that basically Russia and China could pass through freely right but it was a mistake that they make now who knows what could go on now with this Russian ship in the Red Sea because they might defend the Houthis you understand because what sense it is is they different from quite over there to be in the Red Sea somebody could misfire on somebody and I could start shit we know that everybody talking about April the 8th and I was actually waiting to hear if the, the sun was going to be activated because I know every so I actually see a video can yeah actually see a video they say they they activated the sun on the on that day and they say also NASA looking to shoot um rockets, rockets. about three rockets I think yeah I forget um something of the serpent I think they call it something of the serpent I can't remember exactly but something of the serpent yeah they, they call it can you understand so yeah hey and I was watching a documentary also today with um some priests of a serpent deity in um in Egypt of a serpent I was in an outer sleep you understand but I didn't get to watch it that, that one way talking they were the NASA thing I didn't get to take that in property neither but they, they go in and activate the sun on the 8th and they might actually look to do that when the, the clips full right because you know they show movies here you only have a certain time to activate and to do this and you have to time it right to op open certain portals you know what it is so they, uh, they, they try to bring in the movies if you want to hey that, that's they, the might, they might do a lot of things because like this whole situation with Diddy and yeah. even the, the clips that might just be they know they they um they say they're red herring just yeah. now you focus over here while they're doing something else in the background why see you might see after the eight you might see shit happening that i wasn't we are aware of and when they did it they did it when everybody looking up can't. um like this movie don't look up don't look up yeah can't. this movie don't look up they tell you don't look up yeah. because why i think um i think the moon i think it was the moon or the sun was crashing into the earth so the, the government and you don't look up focus down here so they had your do you know what kind of thing to have your focus down here so now they're telling you hey look up but then they do those sorts of shit down here right in front of your face and hey. that's why you always set us up as watchmen to always watch for um yeah watch i think they try for with some plants it's, it's cannibalistic plants that could actually move but it had a, 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 a eclipse also right because one thing with them they used to give out that oil which um caused them to stop using um, fossil fuels you understand but they have to have these shy photos and it has certain kind of um incubation like but the oil that they're using from the tripod because it's also an alien plant um caused something in the atmosphere so with the eclipse now it caused some kind of situation that everybody that outside and see the great light get blind but here's the thing with the tripod the tripod like in your eyes so you can't see and basically it does release a poison to kill you and then they will eat you you understand so who knows what could actually go on for this for this eclipse and them activating the sun and doing other things and that's why the scriptures say when you do a possible they will receive the very elect so wherever they're doing you know in the world they know will be received but the elect wouldn't be deceived you see because the elect brain they don't they don't we don't brainwashed yep we don't brainwashed in this doctrine you understand then like they talk about project blue beam they want to show the Lord coming in the sky wherever the case is. Yahweh Shai done told us how we going to come. You understand? We coming with destruction. You feel you just going to see um, a, a, a so-called UFO hovering above the sky. And I wanted to see about the MK Ultra. They can actually 
um, transmit the sound in your ears. So it's like you hear it, like it, it in your head, it, it, you understand? So you feel like you just been and be seeing that and like, hey, that is the Lord and nah. First of all, for the MOTV, the martial law, the World War Three, and during World War Three is when you have a shite coming because when the missiles flying is when the doves began to come to take away the elect. The doves being the angels with the Yahweh Shai. Because they say the same hour it was an earthquake when yeah, we were in the home. When the camera was being taken up, so we don't know it's basically something simultaneously that going to happen. And then guess what the scripture say? Um, in Second Ezra 16, they'll be coming against the men of the Lord and Yahweh Shai for wonders that guess what? And many of us are going to be martyrs for this. So if that ain't happening, yeah, we, we know the signs. And then the scripture says we are not ignorant of Satan and devices. You understand? Yes, I'm guessing. Um, I was supposed to finish in Ecclesiastes 2. I think it, you did finish it. Yeah, yeah, you did. Okay. It says, um, verse, I make no haste in the time of trouble, verse 3. Cleave make no haste in the time of trouble. Okay. Means, you know, don't go and do irrational shit. Alright? Don't go and, 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 and jump to your own conclusion. Don't take up your own counsel. Don't. And so I always like to use this. Let's say this, um, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. The Lord said, He suffered you to hunger so that you may know man doth not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the most high. Romans 15 and 4 it says these things were written for your learning. It is always good to learn from someone else's mistake, someone else's experience. So if all these things happen in the ancient times, then we have to know apply that in the times to come. Alright? Let's say we we we, we ain't eat how about six days. Now usually around six days of no eating your body starts to feel re-energized. So let's say for three days and the reason I say six days six days is for the ones that willingly afflicting themselves to fast so let, I'll put back at six days so let's say six days not that you intended to fast for six days but six days you're not knowing where your bread coming from so you're looking out for your bread day by day that means your mind always on food so that means the hunger gonna be there always and on the seventh day, you see a big fat juicy pig roll across. And you see this, how, how to be a sign. One day, if there's a sign from the Lord, you know, the Lord, you know, send this pig and you know, that is not really you, that is the hunger talking with you, yeah. that is them spirits in your belly talking. And you go and kill this fucking pig, eat this pig, and then when you're done, suck the last oh, mean yeah. bo a bone, meat of the bone. Oh, yeah. Bam! Two fat rams pass across. Okay. And right, and so I don't mean to continue the speech, but right now the situation that they have in America with the, the pigs, the wild pigs, you understand? Because they've been an encounter a lot. I believe most I gonna use these pigs and also to fuck up people, but one of the ways they will fuck up people, as the brother now explained, they might see this this pig which and then you're gonna need to not have the faith. But guess what? These these pigs are highly toxic. The ones that they cross within the states are overrunning right now in the United States of America. It's highly toxic. The meat is really good. And if it, if it is that they have to kill it and they have to prepare it in such a way, but still it, it ain't good. And guess what? Now come like you know, eat poison there and the two rams. Guess what? But now you're slowly being poisoned inside. The ram was faithful until the end, and then what happened? The Lord presented a ram. You think the Lord can't just make something out of tin here? Yeah? The Lord made bread, just remember that. The Lord God. made bread fall from the heavens. That is why the scripture said they limited the Holy One. You understand? You understand? Limited the Holy One. You limited the Lord. What the Lord could do. That is what you're doing by, by lacking faith that the Lord can feed you in that day. Matter of fact, first of all, it begins with 1 John 3, and I believe it's 18 or 20, when it says, Perfect love cast it out here. So there's, there's no fear in love. If your fear is because your love was not perfected, 
That's right. So if you in that day doubting the Lord gonna take care of you, it's because you know hey, you was doing some effed up shit and you doubting the Lord gonna take care of you. That is why what you're supposed to be doing right now is focusing on keeping yourself clean. I think I think it's Moses he did um say is there anything to hard for me? You understand? So he let you know what time you don't have anything in impossible with Musa, he also said that he was, well, um, when, when Yahushai, when they asked about the rich man in time to be a uh, kingdom, when Yahushai said, with man, it's impossible, but with the Lord, it's impossible. You understand? First of all, as I say, Yahushai, just remember Yahushai took five bread and loaves and feed a thousands, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Twice, five thousand and then four thousand. Hey, if you remember, yeah, how shy tell the disciples go and catch a fish and in the fish belly, in the fish mouth, to find the money to pay for the ass. Um, <laughs> Just remember that. You gotta you remember these stories, and that is why you should always be reading. That's true. Exactly. That is why you should always be reading. You understand? Okay. So that these stories they will stick in your mind. It will stick in your brain. Um, Understand? That is why you're always supposed to be reading so they will stick. It's okay. it, 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 it becomes like muscle movement, like when they talk about um, in Dragon Ball Super, um, Ultra Instinct. Um, you know, Ultra Instinct is like you're not thinking, your, your body just accustomed to the movement, so you'll just, somebody said, uh, you know, it's like instinctively, you just. You, you know you do whatever you had to do because you do it so many times that your 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 muscle memory you understand so when you study these scriptures so much it becomes like like second in like you know like you know, like first you know, like your first instinct like breathing and like you don't tend to breathe you just breathe so with the scriptures when you see in, in that day why think you always try to respond to the devil in in in, in, in that way up on the mount, despite he had him eaten for 40 days and 40 nights. Because why? Because the word was in him, so it's like a, a day, it is day. You understand? It it, it, it ready to come out. And Your cup run it over. You know, it's, it, it's just, just a, an, another illustration, it's like the national anthem. Because like over here, I don't know how it is in other countries, you'll hear it first, like when you go to school, you'll hear it first on you around 6 o'clock. Then you have to say it in school. And then other events, you're gonna have to say it like if you're going here, you cross the stadium for arms, you know, sports, you're gonna have to say it again, though you don't say it already for the morning. You understand? So, even though two, three years pass, you like here in China, they'll play it on the pan, you don't know how to start off your anthem for what's from the love of you, you understand? The, a day, so it's the same thing, you hey. understand? And let me take it back in the ancient time, every Sabbath day, they used to read the commandments. Every Sabbath day, they read the commandments. In Deuteronomy, the Lord say every time you lie down, every time you get up, you, you, you know, you, you, you're meditating on the laws, you're going by the way, you're meditating on the laws, you're always talking about the commandments so that they will stick. Man, those are light. This is um, Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 1. Who is as the wise man and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom make it his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of the Most High, be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. The scripture says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The Lord do whatever pleaseth him. That is why, you know, the scripture say, you know, um, in the job, he said, uh, the spies not the chastity of the Almighty. Um, Cast it down and he pick it up. Um, but everything the Lord do is to strengthen you, especially if he received you as a son. Um, you know, like just as we were saying earlier too, you know, when tribulations start to come by and by, they get offended and, and um, they go out, you understand? They say that be not hasty to go out of his sight. Do you see these things? I like, have patience. It's that time men end up in certain situations are predicament. And guess what? This is the Lord Yahweh Shem and Shai turning the truth back onto you people. It are these people from these other ethnic groups. And I was, um, um, I think it's a Hebrew Israelite song. I can't let a Christian all praise you. You understand? If they deserve doing it for wood and stone so zealous, 
how much more for, for he himself who is innocent the living God. You understand? As the scripture says in Baruch 6, he said these, these, these blasts they think can't even defend itself from bat and rat and them kind of thing and can't even put to death one that will offend them. You understand? So if you put your trust in the Most High Abba Shem El Shai, and even though it comes to the scripture says strive to treat until death, why not? And then you'll receive what a crown of life. Yeah, and you could see you can actually see the scriptures fulfilling and replaying itself right now. Because in the ancient times, in the time of the kings, there were the kings and there were the priests. And even let's say from even the time after Joshua died, and the generation that grew up with Joshua, there were those that kept the commandments because they knew and feared the Haba Hashem and there were those that kept the commandment just because they is tradition. So the group is like this. It's like everybody will have this way about them, this custom, this thing about them that they know they grew up doing. And when you ask them why they're doing it, they will, they will say, no, nah, we're not supposed to do it, we're not supposed to do it. And they will say, all right, why are you not supposed to do it? And then never in their life have they been asked that question. And then they're going to pause. They're like, um, you know, well, we just, we just know we're not supposed to do it. But then they can't explain why. Because why? The, the group has, that was custom. You understand? So now, that is like, that is like, um, like I was thinking here that they like in a taxi, right? There were three people in the back seat. So, let's say the car don't have AC. So, everybody will want to sit by the door where they will get enough breeze. Right? I could understand. Somebody said, nah, I don't want to go in the middle. But let me say you go into a taxi now, it have space and it have AC. Why you don't want to sit on the end? Why you, don't, why you don't want to sit in the middle? Why you don't want to sit in the middle? I want to sit on the end. First of all, when you're sitting, you're going to be against the door and you're in AC. So what is the difference with you sitting on the end and with you sitting in the middle? No difference. Uh, you just grow up, that is custom. And it's the same thing with people in some of these camps now. They come in the camp and it's like custom. It's like some of the things they're doing is like, why are you doing it? Hey, we just know to do it. We just do it. And it's like they, they ain't questioning it. You understand? They ain't questioning it. Alright, why are you having a fashion show on the Passover? And then so it's like, oh, you don't have fashion shows on the Passover. No, we don't. Where in the scriptures it says have a fashion show on the Passover. I was like, you know, we, we never question this. That is why you said this. They see that we are supposed to be here. You understand? And that is why you could see who are the men of the Lord and who not. But, you know, just like to, like this thing with a natural custom that you have, like, as soon as you open a bottle of alcohol or punching, they like to throw some on the ground. Say that is to the spirit. Like, then you, you waste my thing because you understand? And then it have next, um, when I was watching, Jewish, the Jewish community over there in the land, you understand, and um, they was preparing for the for the Sabbath, so they was preparing on the day of preparation, you understand, and the journalist who ever asked, so why it is only doing this, and she said she don't know, just go and tell them to do it, and they keep doing it, you understand, exactly, so you, you have a, it's a, every, everything that the most I have about Shemel Shai tell me to do, it have a reason, well, like, all right, why not to eat fish with, with all fins and scale? It's still what? It, some, all right, what like what so? When, when, when they talk about pork, they say, when they watch um, with pig, it has one of the highest protein contents. You understand? So they say, but guess what? The meat also dangerous and it's very um, toxic in the sense of um, bacteria and, and germs and these kind of things. Now, they say, I think polar bear. I think they say polar bear have a very, they say, I think this is a protein level, protein content of polar bear. They say, like, if you eat a whole polar bear, you can actually kill it. Because it's too much. But let me say it's protein. Like, yeah, protein good for you, but it's too much. Uh, you understand? And that is what people need to understand. Yes, it might have something in it that could benefit you. But that don't mean it's for you. That's right. That don't mean it's for you. And it have certain animals that can eat poison fruits. We can eat certain fruits that are poison and it have certain things like dogs. We, we love chocolate. The time you give out, you feed a dog chocolate, that is it. It's going and die. 
right? Fish without fins and scales, because they don't really have the scales, it will have a high level of mercury. You understand? And mercury ain't good for us. You understand? So this is everything have a reason behind it. Why? It's just like when you're doing a trade, it have a reason in every skill, skill point. Why it is like with, with plumbing, anything that push, like let me say more than 100 psi, it have a um, schedule 80 pipe that they use. For hot water, you use CPVC pipe or you use galvanized rod iron. You can't run hot water through normal PVC because the, especially the heat of the, um, the, um, of the water will start to melt the blasted PVC. So everything have a reason, they just don't do it because um, it have, like in science, trial and, where you do trial and error. You understand? So it's the same thing. You just don't do certain things because, all right, well, this person tell me to do it. What is the reason for, what is the reason for doing it? Or what is the reason for not doing it? So I need a better understanding. Because he made all things for their uses. Can. This is Romans chapter 9 and verse 31. It says, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, had not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it, not by faith, but as they go by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. So when it comes to faith, now they stumble because how it shies the stumbling stone. Okay. So they're just doing things out of tradition. They know like, hey, we just do this because we know to do it. No. First of all, the scripture says, I will give you pastors that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Standing. Standing. So you have to. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all I get it, get understand. You have to get understand. You have to know why. Our Christians so fucking dumb. You understand? Our Christians so dumb. Imagine telling a Christian, you know, and it's from Bible scholars, where our Christianity come from. You understand? Right in the Bible study, sick, um, Christianity is actually pagan. It's in um, the, the purple Bible study, up with any word, brothers, you know, who don't have it, should have it. Or, um, they won't really have that definition in my soul, but you have to go into the dictionary and look up Christian. And they will tell you they were first called Christian at Antioch. Matter of fact, instead of just talking, just say proof all things. First. Worshippers of Serapis were called Christians. Okay. And um, I forget we used to call the, the pastors, or so called pastors, like the priests. I forget we used to call the priests of Serapis. Even um, Vatican. Alright? The moral pilot. Okay. When you look up the word Vatican, um, so it's still content. Now, well, actually, when you look up Vatican, I think the Vatican City is, it, um, I think the place it, it built on is a, is a, is a cemetery. Hmm. And I think the name Vatican goes back to Vatica, which hmm. means the, the, um, like the goddess of death or something like that. Um, well, I don't want to say the same bill was um, basically, um, one of the name was um, a worship place of Apollyon. Or Apollos, and then they have um, Shiva, which is called at destruction and good. You understand? They're plenty of these, these things they worship is 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 um the speed of God, the Statue of Liberty. Uh, I go back to Libertas, uh, ancient Roman goddess Libertas. And uh, they say Christianity, right? Or Christian of pagan origin. The name did not originate with the Christians themselves, nor would the Jews have applied it to the followers of Yahushai, whose claim to be the anointed they opposed so passionately. They spoke of the Christians as the sect of the Nazarenes, right? So that they weren't known as Christians. You understand? There was no as the Nazarenes, or they would have, when they read scriptures, they hear the Apostle Paul talking about the brethren. You understand? They said, Perhaps they enter, like, enter these terms, these names that we find in the Bible now was actually added in basically around the time of the, 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 the structuring of Roman Catholicism. Because Catholic just means universal. All right? So when they were bringing all these different groups together, they, they tell them, you know, come as, as they say in church, come as you are. Keep your custom, just call it by another name. 
all right and and that is where they get jesus from because when you go back in the history jesus come from the god isus which isus and and you know you're right jesus is a white man mm -hmm. jesus is a white man because isus actually goes back to esau all right the ancient druids that is one of the gods the ancient druids used to worship isus and upon thing i think 19 32 in Armenia, Isus, whose name was changed later, later to Jesus, was worshipped in Armenia. And from Jesus, you get Jesus. So that is where Jesus, Jesus, Jesus come from. From the ancient Druids when Constantine conquered them, he took their God and made the, him the, 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 the structure of Christianity. That is why you see they remove Passover and Easter because um, you know other ancient civilizations used to keep a spring festival, Easter, Ishtar. So they put Ishtar there where Passover was to have you Christians believing that you, you celebrating you know, the, the, the resurrection of the Lord. When it's really you worshiping Tammuz, going back to Ezekiel chapter 8. You weeping for Tammuz with your cross buns. That's not a cross, that's a teeth. It goes back to his attack. You understand? And to prove his, his Tammuz, in Hebrew there are two, there are two teeth, well, three. There's Tazatan and Ta, T H A. And Ta is a, a, a cross in a circle. So the bun is the circle with the, with the, with the cross. That goes back to Thamuz, the son of Nimrod. And watch this, I was studying it um, yesterday. Because um, by some wood leaven inside, I, and I only pass over his spawn leaven bread, but all the fucking eating thing with leaven inside. Yeah, right. You understand? The scripture says the feast are unleavened bread, but only eating leaven bread. You understand? People ignorant. And one of the things that they're doing in one of the new Bibles where they have virgin, they put in Christian. You understand? And if these people they go and worship, because you now we go back to my question I asked on Facebook a few years ago. You understand? I so said, show me in the Bible where the Lord say he went and save um, Christians, which you cannot find. Inside the, the King James Version, the word Christian is only there around what, three times. You understand? Mentioned three times. The Lord never said he went and save a Christian, but now. Lord, they translated these Bibles in modern English instead that they have been bridging it for Christian. You understand? Which is a, a miss, not miss, it, but to basically misguide you people. Right? Um, so it says they spoke of the, of the Christians as the sect of the Nazarenes. Right? Acts 24 5. Perhaps also Galileans, a term which the Emperor Julian attempted later vainly to revive. The word must have been coined by the heathen population of Antioch. As the church emerged from the synagogue and a Christian predominantly Gentile took its place among the religions of the world. You understand? So they were not Christian, it was basically pagan as if it was going to Christus. And now the word, what should they have as Christus, right? Which is Greek way, Greek way of saying anointed. King David was anointed. You understand? Samuel was anointed. Saul was anointed. All these men was also basically if you want to put Christ or, or, or Messiah, the whole nation of Israel is anointed for the Messiah. So if you want to talk about anybody who's Christians, only the, the Hebrew Israelites, if you want to put it that way, is the Christian <coughs> nation. And nobody else outside of Israel could be classed as a Christian if you want to put it that way. Now if I might say this now the word Christ is by self is not a bad word. Okay. Just like Balaam. Mm -hmm. Balaam by self is not a bad word. It just means Lord, Master, or Husband. Christ just means anointed in Greek. But would it, would it do, would it take Balaam and when you, wait, let's say like a group, like they say, like, like the prophets come out and say, you have to worship Balaam or call the Lord Balaam. But then, they start pushing festivals and customs that the worshippers of the false god Balaam 
you know, attributes to the false god Balaam, then that actually have you going off into idolatry. She done. And it's the same thing with, with Christ. Alright? When you say Christ, or well, Christ just means anointing, alright, no problem. But then, in your mind, Christ white. In your mind, you have to worship Christ by keeping Easter, by celebrating his birthday. Now you're going away from just, you know, simply using Christ to go into idolatry because you now you're worshiping Christ the idol. That's right. Which is, as his brother said, Serapis Christos. Which really and truly is Ptolemy II. Right. So, because when, when it's studying words now, as the brother said, when you call Jesus or you call Christ, they have an image in the head. So, when this script starts, to prove Christ is not bad, myself is not a bad word, and I, and I might mention how Balaam, um, not Balaam, um, Baal, that is what I meant to say, Baal, um, to prove that Baal, myself, is not a bad word, David, I think when, um, I can't remember who he was, I think it was the Philistines who was fighting, and he called the name of the place Baal Perizim. And, and that was given homage to the most high. Okay. Yes, and the Lord um, the Lord made um made a breach, something like that. And because when I think about it too, um one of the chief deities for the Philistines also was uh, Malak. Malak means king or would you say Malcolm? Malcolm, yeah. You understand? Or or Molek. Right? So when, when, when they say eh, when, when they worship them, them praying, them they saying king. Right? In Hebrew, alright. Like Allah. Allah Allah in the natural Hebrew tongue is God. But in Aramaic with the Muslims, which really and truly they, 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 the God is really Allah. Right? Allah means the God. But the songs the same. Two different spellings, but the songs the same. You understand? Can bring something back here Can. because they said Malak means king, right? Can. There is just a back up here. This is Jeremiah 49 and verse 1 concerning the Ammonites. Ammonites, right? The Japanese. Thus said the Lord, Had Israel no sons? Mm -hmm. Had he no heir? Why? Because if you have no heir, then guess what? Somebody said your, your, your king should come out of you, right? Yeah. Why doth their king inherit God? And his people dwell in the cities. So now when you read that, you will say, well, yeah, that means a king should come out of Israel and not from Ammon. But when you go into the word and when you go into different translations, that is no way it's saying. It's, it's saying, why does their God inherit God? And God. the name of their God is Malcolm. God. So he said, why does Malcolm inherit God? But when they translated the Bible, they just translated it as king because yes, Malcolm or Mal uh, Malak just mean king. But it was talking about an, an, a, a, a false god, a false deity. Okay. So when it says, why does their king inherit God? It was actually talking about the idol. Hmm. Okay. Means why does Malcolm inherit God? Understand? Just to prove that we were saying Malcolm just means king. Okay. Just to show you too. You know, when the scriptures say, make not the mention of the name of other gods, it actually goes back to that image in your head. Um, who was saying it? A video I was watching and the person was talking about Hebrew and he was actually saying the same thing I was saying, but in a different way, right? It's not word for word, but thought for thought. And he was, um, because remember, the time I was, I was saying, it's picture letters. And normally people say, one picture account for a thousand words. In Hebrew, we it pictographic. When you're reading, or, or matter of fact, just by speaking to somebody, you're seeing images automatically popping up in the head. Like if you ask somebody for directions, like you, you go for a fire station, they ask you, all right, the fire is where you give me what you call it. When you're explaining this to them, them getting an image in the head, all right, well, it have a fire hydrant, it have a school not too far, the house, right? they see an image in the head when they speak. Same thing when they're reading. When they're reading it, they see an image in the head. Now, what Esau did, by, by putting these pictures of a white way or when we read it now, we see in pale ass people. You understand? So paint the image. Can. Because, you know, up to a certain point of coming into the truth, it has been hard to differentiate 
that image when you think about ancient Israel. Every time you think about ancient Israel, that image of white people gonna come into here because they just push it in the movies mm -hmm. and they don't they have big um big Bibles, everything the open there's, there's pale ass people you're gonna see, so it just in your head. And it's the same thing I do, I see doing taking people fresh out of the world and telling them call on Christ and yeah. sometimes they mention Jesus and that image can be in the head. Yeah. And that's why some people they see King James and all so much as being white and the, the part where you live in Europe, whoever the so most people they say that uh, King James is a um, a white man and I come like right a mover. I go on in a in a place with a rasta. So they have the black people of Europe, right? I see but like two daughters or whatever, but she, um, they say James, we call it James. So I say, but wait now, if this is black people, right? I say, but with King James, I say, because look, okay, I like this, this is his daughter, and whatever. He said, nah, King James, King James, right? I say, but this is not like he descendants, so whatever the case is. And this one arguing with me, I like, hey, them real put me people, the real, the man have all the, the, the Negroes and stuff and who was generals and commanders and who sit on the throne in, in England and then kind of thing and had um, This is Charles James, Charles James daughter, granddaughter and I, I said with King James and the man said King James why and I have to explain to this man different things hey, <laughs> Now every time you look at Vikings you think Vikings is white right. Scandinavian people right? Now to prove the Vikings was black King James was actually a descendant from the Vikings. Mm. Because when you when you watch the movie Vikings, right? There was Ragnar and, it, and his brother Rollo. Mm -hmm. Now Ragnar is a fictional character, but Rollo is actually a real person that lived. Alright? I think they so call him Rollo the Bear. If I'm not mistaken, they say he was so big he couldn't ride on a horse. And what happened is that when he went into, into France and he married, I think he married the princess, he actually got to, to establish um, a kingdom for himself and from them came the Burgundians and from the Burgundians come down, that is where they, they came down to, to King James hmm. and if King James black and he descended from the Burgundians, the Burgundians would have been who? The so-called Vikings that basically, as they say, Came, um, came civilized and started, you know, changing, you know, the ancient ways where when the case is proven that the Vikings were also black. Um, or Jake, same black, but they were Israelites. And um, look, I was watching our next documentary with Egyptology where um, is Tut Tutanon or some so They say he died at the age of 19, but they say he was like a real jet war um, pharaoh for Egypt right and they have a arm um, what you call it with a battle with he and the hittites so they're showing chariots and people thing you know whatever the cases who fall in and then when you see in these people dark skin you understand some some kind of thing that they had up like it looked like almost like the ark right but it's white and they had the people here black and they see and they hear everything and say well these is the, the egyptians fighting against the hittites i said look at that the Israelites went because one of the nations we had to take on also one of the Hittites or whatever. Like the shame. Now when they show the, the Israelites going into eat, they, they show any white people too. So why or oh, they have all of this and I was just telling my wife, I said, look at this, eh? They love to go in people country. Because she <coughs> said they said they like say they find it. I say, yeah, but you can't go in somebody's country and find something and one thing and you explain any people and I'm history. Guess what? I know even your history. Look, to show it he saw he saw is the is the wicked. If you go and dig up a grave right now, they will arrest you, right? But Esau going in Egypt and taking people out the graves and bring them back in their land on this plane. Yeah. Calling them mummies. No, they, they're not dead people, they're mummies. But it's the same thing. If you go in a graveyard right now and dig somebody up, you're gonna get arrested. But the so-called white man could go in other people's countries, dig graves up, and put them in museums. Can't. It's a security. So not even in debt you have rest. Not even in debt. And that is why I believe the most I allow you to know where certain burial grounds 
for certain patriarchs are because like um um joseph joseph said don't leave you born in egypt get back into israel all right think about esau finding that esau gonna take joseph bone and take it out of the land and, and certain men because i mean watch it, 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 it could just be movies yeah but who knows because they talk about moses bone and i think i'm merlin right the greatest sorcerer amongst the the the, the i don't even know if merlin will be fictional but one thing with the the, the staff or the magic one so oh, the magic one was actually a bone that come from something or somebody or a dragon or something so so who knows because god make moses a yeah, god <laughs> so just look for some but it wasn't easy to bring out okay. hey so with that i'm gonna give all praises to yahawa oh, uh, shabby out shy Give Pablo and us the apostles of greatness who are doing really well. Salutation to the men and brethren out here pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. If you are quite young, that listening, you know, in, in, in peace and in silence, all right. right, and maintaining faith and good works, all right. We say shalom to the elect, all right, and to the day that the Lord sent his chariots along with the hour shy to come and deliver the elect. Hey, we say shalom, shalom, we're almost out. Done. What about the other guy?